good evening. <clears throat> I call the August 26th meeting of the Park Hill Board of Education to order. Can you please join me for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge, pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> Um, before I call for announcements, I'll ask that everyone please silence your phones, and I'd like to remind the board of our norms. Be prepared, display integrity, remain mission-driven and goal-focused, stay in the role of a board member, no grandstanding, and speak and listen respectfully. Uh, any announces, announcements this evening, Mr. Monsas? No, thank you. Mr. Payne? None, thank you. Ms. Reed? No, thank you. Mrs. Woodley? None, thank you. Mr. Klein? None, thank you. Dr. Coward? I do have one. Uh, last year we kept a COVID dashboard up for our public so we could keep them informed of what was going on within our schools. We'll do that again. And so that will be starting next Monday. And so we will be sharing our positive cases, exposures, and new quarantines for each week. And we'll divide that just like we've done in the past, elementary, middle school, secondary, and then other, which would be district office, those type of pieces. So that will start next Monday for us. We just want people to know that. Okay. Thank you. So I'll need a motion and a second to adopt the August 26th agenda as presented. So moved. Second. I have a motion for Mr. Klein and a second by Ms. Reed to adopt the agenda as presented. Dr. Coward, any modifications? None that I have, thank you. Board, any modifications? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed say nay. Motion carries 6-0. We're going to <clears throat> Um, conduct a public hearing on the proposed 2021 tax rate. The hearing is now open. Dr. Coward or Dr. Kelly, do you have any comments before I call for public comments? I do not. We have not received any. I have not received any this week in lieu of this. Or is anybody here? Dr. Kelly, I don't think you have either. No. Okay. At this time, any citizens wishing to make public comments on the tax rate are welcome to do so. Please come to the microphone, state your name, and address the board. Seeing we don't, as we don't have any comments, the public hearing for the 2021 tax rate is closed. We'll move on to recognition and awards. Ms. Kirby? Thank you. We have two exciting recognitions this evening. Uh, we've got our Girls Nation uh, student, uh, Sally Green, is a student at Park Hill South High School, and she's one of only 100 students from across the nation, one of only two in Missouri, who earned a spot at the um, American Legion Auxiliaries Girls Nation program. This, uh, so she first was at Missouri Girls State through that program, um, and where she was elected chair for one of the two political parties at Girls State. And then she uh, headed to DC where she presented legislation that she had created to Senators Roy Blunt and Josh Hawley and she had an opportunity to meet President Biden and Vice President Harris. Um, so this gave her an opportunity to learn more about how the federal government works. Um, and then this past spring, during Teacher Appreciation Week, Chiefs star Tyron Matthew um, surprised uh, two of our Park Hill teachers as part of his Tyron's Teachers. Um, Shelby Sanchez uh, teaches at Lion Creek Elementary and Lisa Ropey teaches at Hawthorne Elementary. And uh, they were recognized for their hard work um, at, during Teacher Appreciation Week. So we appreciate both their work and that recognition. And I lied, I have three. <laughs> um, we also, um, many of our schools use the Positive Behavior Support Program. Um, and this year we kind of swept the awards <laughs> for the Missouri Schoolwide Positive Behavior Support program. Um, Union Chapel and Chin both received the gold recognition of excellence. Um, for Union Chapel, that's their fifth year in a row, and it's uh, um, Chin's first time. 
Um, Hopewell received the Silver Recognition Award of Excellence, and Lion Creek received the Bronze Recognition Award of Excellence. So, since we just finished the Olympics, we took all the spots on the podium. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so we're, we're really proud of all of the work that went into that. All of the staff at those schools just do a lot of work to make that program work. So, congratulations to them, and congratulations to those students. To public comments during this part of our agenda we will receive public comments from patrons attending in person followed by comments received in writing by the noon deadline today this is hips have we received any uh, cards from patrons attending this evening? we've had none register by the 6:30 time okay we did have one uh, email comment uh, uh, Brian Heflin um, during this time, we do have a three-minute time limit and a 15-minute total time limit, so should be good. <laughs> we should be. <clears throat> Dear Park Hills School Board and Superintendent, this is Brian Heflin. I live in the Sun Point subdivision, and my children attend Southeast Elementary and Park Hill South. While listening to the August 16th, 2021 board meeting, I was shocked to learn that although our students are required to be immunized against disease, it appears our Park Hill staff are not required to be immunized against those same diseases. How can this be? I served in the U.S. military for nearly 23 years and I have been inoculated against some crazy microbes to include black plague and anthrax. I would attest that nothing bad happened to me as a result of those injections. It is negligent for us to permit unvaccinated staff to enter Park Hill school buildings. This public health loophole needs to be closed as soon as possible. Sincerely, Brian Heflin. We're going to move on to the consent agenda. This evening's consent agenda includes items 6.1 through 6.7. Dr. Coward, are there items that need to be highlighted? I don't have any this evening. Thank you. Board, do we have any questions for Dr. Coward? Seeing that, I'll need a motion and second to approve consent agenda items 6.1 through 6.7 as presented. So moved. Second. I have a motion from Ms. Reed and a second by Mrs. Woodley to approve the consent agenda as presented. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed say nay. Motion carries 6-0. Um, action item this evening, adoption of resolution authorizing the Park Hill School District of Platt County, Missouri to offer taxable general obligation refunding bonds at competitive public sale. Right, and as we talked at the last board meeting, we want to take advantage of these low interest rates that we have right now. And so we do have representatives from uh, Piper Sandler with us tonight. We have Todd Goffey with us and Hannah Draper. I believe Hannah's going to do the presentation this evening. And then we also have uh, uh, representatives from Gilmore Bell with us also. So sit so standing right back there. Megan, that, remember that right? I'm so sorry, I was going, I should have written that one down in my apologies. So we appreciate them being here. So this is again, an opportunity for us to pay back some of our bonds early and take advantage of this and save our taxpayers dollars. So Hannah's going to go through that with us if she would, please. Hello, good evening. Um, this resolution here will give... You have a seat. Thank you. Oh, okay. That's okay. <laughs> uh, this resolution here would give the district permission to move forward with this uh, taxable refunding. Um, the plan would be to pay um, some outstanding principal on the series 2017 issue early um, because of the increased assessed evaluation it provided an opportunity to prepay some bonds early um, so the plan is to pay some bonds that would be paid in 2037 in 22 and 23 and by doing this the district would um, save about $400,000 per year in interest um, through 2037 for a total of $4.7 million. And then we do have a timetable, I believe. Uh, Just a second, we'll pull that up for you. There you go, we'll scroll it up. 
So you may rem remember from last year, we completed a refunding as well. It's pretty much the same uh, timeline. Um, so it'll be the same process tonight if the resolution is approved. We would, Gilmore and Bell would put together bond documents and we get everything prepared for the sale of bonds. Um, we'd go through the rating process again and then we would have the competitive sale planned for October 18th at 10 a.m. Um, on that day, we would select the underwriter based on the lowest uh, interest rate that is given. And after that, the closing would be planned for November 4th. Important reminder, this goes back to our, this is actually our 2017 bonds that we're looking at uh, mm -hmm. to, to refinance on this one. So this is a great option for us and for our taxpayers. Any questions you might have for, for Hannah? Uh, just a curious question. What, what's our total outstanding bonds at this point? I, I see we're refinancing 12.1 million, but you have an idea where we're at total. Um, I, guess have that yeah, I have this right here. So, as of today, the total outstanding bonds is, a, is 157 million seven hundred thirty thousand uh minus uh the payment on three one of twenty twenty one of five million dollars so around 152 million as of today okay thank you yeah okay i would entertain a motion and second to adopt the resolution authorizing Park Hill School District of Platte County, Missouri to offer taxable general obligation refunding bonds at competitive public sale as presented. Sure. Mm -hmm. Second. <laughs> <laughs> I have a motion from Mr. Fain and a second by Ms. Reed to adopt the resolution as presented. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed say nay. <clears throat> motion carries 6 so. Thank you. Thank you. Our next action item is to set the 2021 tax rate. Dr. Kelly? We had established the uh, proposal here uh, that you have on this board item. These tax rates are assuming that you had passed the last action item. <laughs> um, we would not be able to set these act rates without having you had done that first. And so these have been uh, set up to um, it's at the ceiling level on the operating and that has dropped quite a bit as we talked about last time uh, due to the reassessment and so the debt service has actually gone up in order to assist paying for um, repaying those uh, those bonds early so um, overall this would result in no tax uh, change over 2020. I would also point out we have had the same tax rate then since 2017. I would need a motion and a second to approve tax levies in the following funds. Fund 1, operating 4.2046. Fund 2, special revenue 0. Fund 3, debt service Point nine nine zero nine and fund four capital point two. Any discussion? Can we get a motion? So no move. Second. I have a motion for Ms. Reed and a second by Ms. Woodley. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed say nay. Motion carries six zero. Our next item is to approve receipt of the July 2021 Treasurer's Information Report. Dr. Kelly? Yeah, the Treasurer's Information Report in July actually um, represents a reset um, of the fiscal year. And so the values you see here will be the uh, first time you've seen these values. Um, just to remind you of the layout of this, the first page is revenue. And in the gray column is actually uh, what we received last fiscal year. So that gives us a kind of a benchmark uh, for uh, what is typical uh, in any given year. 
uh, as we move across to the right, then the next is the budget that you approved in June um, for this fiscal year. And so then as we continue to move, you'll see the July, that's a, how much we re, uh, revenue that we received in that period or July. And as we go through the months, uh, that'll be reflected in the, each of the, uh, the 12 months moving forward. And then um, the next column is um, the year-to-date value, which in the case of July is, those values will be the same because we've only had one period at this point um, in the fiscal year. And the last column is how much of our budget we've received to date. And so I utilize that last column as um, looking at year over year and where we kind of uh, compare and whether there's any changes, I would say. Uh, on the revenue page, there really isn't any significant uh, deviation from prior years. It's not typically a large revenue month for us, July, and in fact, it's one of the few in which the state <coughs> revenue will outpace the local revenue, and so that's because that we do receive equal increments of our state foundation formula, and, and so you'll see that $3 million from state sources is reflected there, and the vast majority of that is in state foundation formula, which is made up of um, that line 5311 as well as uh, the classroom trust fund which is 5319 and so those are the the formula dollars from the state but this will be one of the few months in which the state is actually higher than what we would receive locally <coughs> where the majority of our overall revenue will always come from um, uh, from local sources the one thing I do want to note also in that action that you took with the refinance uh, of the bonds is that you'll need to ultimately amend the budget. We did not plan on this refinance until we got our assessed valuation number, <laughs> so we did not know that we were going to be able to uh, provide that opportunity uh, for that kind of savings uh, until we received our assessed valuation number. So you did not approve a revenue or expenditure budget that included this refinance. and so. We usually uh, will wait till the end of the year to make that budget amendment. And so in June, I'll remind you that uh, way back in August, uh, this August, you actually approved um, for us to do the refinance, which will increase both revenue and expenditures uh, for us um, for this fiscal year. Uh, so I, as I said, there's not really a lot of uh, newsworthy items on revenue. If you have any specific questions, I'll uh, address those. Uh, Revenue, I did highlight, um, I'm sorry, expenditures is on the second page and it's laid out in a very similar way. There is a little deviation that if you were to compare last year, and it's in this line that I've highlighted, I don't know if you can see it, but it's on supplemental pay. And um, this is actually, the anomaly was actually last year on that. So if you were to pull up last year's July treasurer's report, you would notice that um, that value was quite a bit less last year than it was this year. And that is, has everything to do with summer school and when summer school was held. So if you might remember last year, um, we didn't start summer school until July, which meant the payrolls were actually deferred until August. Most of those didn't, uh, were actually recorded until August. And so um, this year we're kind of back on a normal track. So it's typical that we will have spent um, a, good, a good percentage of our supplemental certified uh, salaries in July, so this is more normal than uh, last year. They will actually, when you see this again in August, they will actually have caught up, and so that that will be very a very similar value as you saw last year. But that's one line that's um, that would stand out if you were to look at a year over year comparison. Um, the other that really stands out would be under capital, and this is just simply we didn't have the the amount of projects still going on and the payments uh, still do uh, and so we don't have any bond projects we don't have any bond revenue uh, remaining from April 2017 bond issue and so these are all uh, been paid for through operational funds or that capital tax levy that you uh, approve every year so quite a bit less in capital uh, this year than over last year but other than that it's um, fairly typical um, the end result is um, reflected on the third page, which is this graph, which kind of keeps our keep track of our fund balance. And so um, we ended the year at about 22 or 21.9 percent. And so it went uh, dropped a little bit as we moved from um, last 
the last June into July, um, and that's uh, normal, and we'll see a normal pattern now with these blue bars as we continue through this fiscal year. This this pattern has been like clockwork in terms of our cash flow. Uh, it's very typical, and so I, I would imagine that this is going to be very similar again this year. I'd be glad to answer any questions that you have on specific items. Dr. Kelly, I noticed about the uh, ESSER funds, I think 9.5 yeah. million. Can you just provide a little um, description about, uh, are, is that fully secured at this point, or we're waiting for those to come in, and then how can we apply it? Yeah, so ESSER actually shows up in a multiple lines on the federal sources <coughs> page, though, so just for reference for others. Um, I think you're referring to the revenue side. And so um, for next year, there's actually this line is 5424, and this is the second line under federal sources. And so that's actually a combination. When we establish that budget number, we haven't received any of this. Um, but when we established that number, we were going from what we were um, anticipating and receiving an ESSER 2 plus the ESSER 3 funds. And the ESSER 2, we have a confidence about um, getting those relatively soon because they have been um, they have been uh, addressed by the state and included in the budget. The ESSER 3 funds is about six six and a half million dollars, which is the biggest part of that. We have gone through a pretty extensive application process. Uh, academic services and business services has uh, submitted that. Um, those are all in. Uh, the plan, the budget is all in for that. Um, but we cannot actually make a pay application on any of it until the state um, legislature approves the budget. And so there is not really um, probably a likelihood that we're going to receive a, a, percentage, a large percentage of that this year. So we may actually miss that mark. Um, I, I feel good that the money is secured and that the money will come, but uh, I think through some of the logistics of uh, the state, I don't they have they don't have the mechanism to be able to release those funds yet to school districts, from my understanding. So or three. So we may not receive the the funding that's shown in the revenue line item in our budget until next fiscal right. year. Possibly. Right. Okay. Yeah. And some of the things in our application actually would support that as well, which is um, mm -hmm. the federal government typically in on this one, uh, ESSER three will not pay you until you actually incur the, the expenditures. And some of our plan actually are on expenditures for this year. So we wouldn't be able to even apply to get those until we've completed the work of the plan. And so some of those we, you know, we won't have, um, you know, for example, counselor salaries. You know, we'll have expenditures through June, and so we probably wouldn't be able to apply for those until uh, we've completed those expenditures. So we may not be may even making an application for those until July and August, which will be into the next fiscal year. Okay. No further questions? I need a motion and second to accept receipt of the July 2021 Treasurer's Information Report as presented. So moved. Second. I have a motion from Mrs. Woodley and a second by Ms. Reed to accept receipt of the Treasurer's Information Report. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed say nay. Motion carries 6-0. We're going to move to information presentations. We have a Patron Insight Stakeholder Feedback Survey that Ms. Kirby will present. Yes, Nicole's coming up. Just to uh, remind everyone, this was actually written by Ken DeSagart, and we've worked with Patreon Insight for a number of years, and unfortunately, Ken passed away last Saturday evening, and uh, we will miss him greatly in the work that he has done. He has been working with us for a long time, and his work has really supported a lot of our things that we do within our strategic plan and the data that we use, uh, but they, he has come with, a great, um, it's come with a great deal of accuracy for us and really has helped us. And so Nicole is going to walk us through this. She was going to anyway because he was ill, uh, but we'll walk us through this. So just a reminder, this is kind of help us out with our long range facility planning and kind of a tax tolerance. And so that was really the purpose of this. And then we will uh, be uh, getting the, act, the services of, a, of another firm that we can use in the future because we know we need to do another one of these. So this is just another step in that process that we were talking about. But we really do um, just, uh, want to think about Ken's family and we just appreciate the work that they've done. So it's just be remiss not to say that. So. 
Thank you. Nicole? Yes. Um, so uh, Ken, with his patron insight company, um, has been working with us uh, for almost 20 years. Um, we asked him to do an additional survey in addition to the annual fall survey that he does for us. And this one he conducted in July. It was one of the last things he did. He sent us the final report from the ICU. Um, and as always, it was a random telephone survey uh, using both landlines and cell phone numbers. Um, and he made sure that it was evenly divided between the two high schools. So uh, there were 400 calls made and um, 200 each from the Park Hill High School and Park Hill South attendance areas. Um, this was um, using the power of statistics, a uh, stratified random sampling um, to give a highly accurate rating of um, within um, five percentage points and um, plus or minus. And um, we have found over the years that his surveys are uh, meet that standard of high accuracy. Um, so the first question uh, was um, intended to help to help the respondents uh, warm to the survey um, and it also mirrors the kind of questions that Ken would always ask at the beginning of a regular fall survey but there was just one in this case. Um, so he had a setup in which he talked about some of the uh, difficulties that are going on uh, right now with the pandemic and, and then asked, um, thinking about your overall view of the district's performance today, what grade would you give them? And um, we had 84% that gave the district either an A or a B. And then we got into some priorities. And at first, uh, it was open-ended, so we didn't uh, prompt with any particular priorities, but then asked people to tell us what they thought that we should be working on. Uh, looking to the future, what do you think the priorities should be for the Park Hill School District? Um, as you can see, he put these in order. Um, the top thing was providing a quality education, teaching the basics. I don't know was high. There was a lot of people who kind of, we, we see that a lot in these surveys where people kind of defer to us on these kinds of things. Um, putting students back in the classrooms, other, which means it was just a catch-all. Um, updating technology, maintaining or upgrading facilities, and providing a safe environment. And then, uh, Ken provided um, a list of priorities and asked them to rate them on a simple scale. So with the first one, updating classrooms throughout the district, 71% rated that high or medium. Modifying spaces to serve the speci specific needs of populations such as spe special education students and gifted students. 79% rated that high or medium. Then maintenance issues such as roofs, parking lots, and HVAC system updates, for example, 95% rated that high or medium. Ensuring parity from building to building so that each student has access to comparable facilities, that's a fairness question. Um, 82% rated that high or medium. Having facilities that are competitive with neighboring school districts, 66% rated that high or medium. Updating facilities for athletic activities, 58% rated that high or medium. Updating facilities for visual and performing arts, 75% rated that high or medium. We then asked people to rank, to choose their top priority, and then in a subsequent question, to choose their second priority. So um, when reading all of them again, we had a top priority uh, of ensuring parity from building to building. 
Then next with 25% uh, maintenance issues. And then next with 22% modifying spaces to serve the specific needs of populations such as special education students and gifted students. And you can see how the rest broke down there. The second priority, um, the top answer for second priority was parity again. And the second priority was none, that they didn't have another priority. The third was facilities that were competitive with neighboring school districts. So then Ken did a cross tabulation. He took those, he scored respondents answers on those two previous questions. He gave them um, two points if they scored it their, with their first choice and one point if they scored it with their second. And using that combined weighted scale, the top answer was ensuring parity. Next was maintenance issues, then modifying spaces to serve specific needs of populations, then updating classrooms, then updating facilities, then having facilities that are competitive, then don't know, that wasn't something that they read, but if they answered that, they recorded it. Um, none are important. That was also something that somebody could say that they recorded even though it wasn't read. And then finally, updating facilities for athletic activities. Um, Next, the questions were designed to identify how much taxpayers would be willing to uh, increase their taxes, if at all. So um, these, are, these uh, are always, Ken would always ask these in, in a certain order to um, find out the most that they would be willing and then working back from there. Um, so if Park Hill proposed a bond issue, that included all of your high priority items and it resulted in a tax increase of about $160 per year for the owner of a $300,000 home. How do you think you would vote if it were held today? 46% favored or strongly favored that. That's not enough to pass that uh, a bond issue would be 57%. Uh, what if it uh, included most but not all of the items you considered a high priority? Um, and it resulted in a tax increase of about $80 per year for the owner of a $300,000 home. 54% rated that favored or strongly favored. That's within the margin of error, so likely would not pass. Then what if instead the school district's proposal for a future bond issue included some but not many of the items you considered a high priority and it resulted in no tax increase? 69% favored or strongly favored, which would be a more comfortable margin. And then for those who answered um, that they would oppose or strongly oppose, why, would you, why do you believe you would oppose such a bond issue if the election were held today? Uh, 31 people said they didn't want higher taxes. 23 people said it was not good timing economically. Nine people said something else. And eight people said they don't trust the district to spend money wisely out of the 400. Any questions that I could answer for you? you talked about a secondary survey. Can you talk about that a little further? So it sounds like the results here were pretty clear. This gave us some good guidance, but I'm just curious right, about next steps. That would be the next steps that we'll start working on. And so that we wanted to know where, where, where is our community, you know, around tax tolerance, around what is important to them. So this will help that guide that work. And so we have a list, a large list of, of wants and needs from a lot of people. So we'll start taking those and then prioritize them based on what we're seeing here. I think uh, there's some interesting things on this one around what is interesting. Uh, uh, we didn't really, we saw a high number around fine arts that uh, we hadn't seen in the past. Uh, we saw things around specialized spaces uh, for special education gifted. Uh, we saw a lot on parity, and I think that's kind of at the um, discretion and the definition of the 
of the person of what does parity mean. Par parity can mean a lot of things, and so I think teasing that out will be the next step. And so identifying what could be projects we'd want to do. If I'm reading that right now, it looks like our community would prefer a no tax increase bond issue, which is why we're doing the things that we're doing, trying to pay off debt early to give us more space and able to do that. And so the next step will be working through that process and then um, coming back to the board, I think around in October and, and trying to come up with some plans for that. So we can, um, if we're looking and then the board just needs to, we, we need to talk and decide what you want to do. Um, do you want to put together a bond issue for this coming spring or at another date? Uh, what timeline would you prefer and what would you like also? So some input from you all would be very, very helpful to us. Sure, and I just want to reflect on Ken's contribution to the district. I know Janice and Susan, mm -hmm. as, as veterans like myself of the board, Ken's been a fixture. Mm -hmm. Is, is his company going to remain a going concern, or do we know? No, it, it will no longer be. So we'll have to look for a new company. So we'll take our try to take our we'll try to take our questions and then <coughs> see if we can find a company that can help us with that. So we'll do that in a rather rapid pace sure. because we're going to be in a short timeline. Yeah, thank you. You're welcome. So the the next survey will be our normal kind of normal survey that we do in the we're going to try to get as close as possible to the regular timing we're going to um, work on an rfp to uh, identify a new survey provider that can help us with that and, we're, and as dr howard said we're going to try to see if they can use some of the questions we've been asking with ken so that we'd have some longitudinal data data over time and we'd also like to dig a little deeper on these questions i mean that's really the next question so what does that mean what does parity mean what do those things mean and so we need some help with that and so we'll sit down with them and work through those questions so that we can really kind of hone in on what is it that our community supports and what is it their desires are for us when you talk about the board needs to have a discussion are we having that are we having a retreat we have a work session coming up in late september and then we'll talk about it at the October. We got two board meetings in October, and so um, I will say that if we're looking at an April type bond issue for April of 22, uh, we could go as late as January, I believe, in order to get that bond language put together. Uh, we normally try to do that by December, but that would be the timeline. And uh, I think let's get the other data back in. Let's get a little more information and let the board decide <coughs> we want to go then. Uh, and we also. We'll look at enrollment data. We just there's a lot of things we need to look at here, and then prioritize. So uh, we've got a lot of work ahead of us. And of course, you'll include kind of where we're at, like with absolute learning college and cottages and yes, kind of we've got well. yes, we added some new learning cottages at Union Chapel, and so they were we were pouring concrete last Thursday right before their open house in order to get a sidewalk in. So it was uh, we've got we've got those issues going on too, and I think special programs is a is an important piece for us to look at. We have a lot of special programs in our schools, whether it's gifted, special education, the Jones Center, all sorts of things. So we need to look at all those. We need to look at our fine arts facilities. We need to look at our athletic facilities. Uh, we definitely need to look at, we've heard a lot about Park Hill High School. Um, and so we've heard a lot about all of our schools. Uh, hearing all that though, I would also say, I am so proud of our operations and maintenance groups and our custodians and our grounds people because our facilities do look wonderful and we take wonderful care of them. So that's a key, component of our community is taking care of what we've been given and I'm very proud of the work that we're doing in that. But there's always more to do. Uh, at some always. point in that in that process then can we highlight um, <clears throat> kind of that information because I know we have a system mm -hmm. in the computer that people can input things mm -hmm. that need to be done and fixed and yes. we could also hear data on how many things we are fixing and what our timeline is for those and that kind of thing. We can do all of that. Um, just a question on the, do we know if there are local companies that are comparable to Kins so that they are familiar with the metro at least and, you know, the Kansas City area as we ask some of these questions? Or? There are, there is one, possibly, maybe two. Okay. Uh, there's one out of St. Louis that's used by a lot of local schools that actually are from St. Louis that do a lot here in the Kansas City area. Okay. And so, and there's another national group that some of our local school districts use too. So we'll, okay. we'll look at all of those and try to see which one is the best, best fit for us. I'm yeah. guessing we weren't the only ones that use, I know we weren't the only no. ones that use Kansas. No. So <laughs> As a matter of fact, I know we weren't. Yeah, so so we'll, we'll everyone is in that vote, I'm yes. guessing at the moment. Yes. Okay. I think we're lucky to have 
I think we were lucky to have Ken overall, but um, lucky to have him local. But um, I don't know that that's a requirement going forward because he really shouldn't have bias. No, so this is not bias. So that's why we like this one. It's uh, with 400, you get that plus or minus five percent, and I think that's a that's a great number and really has been a nice piece for us. And um, it's interesting because some people say, like, that's, I, they didn't call me, and that's it. It is a random sample. And so that's why statistically, uh, I think yeah. you've got some really good numbers. Very intentional. Yes. I, I did appreciate, though, I mean, he was very familiar with other school districts in our yes. area to, uh, to present information in his analysis, not in the data, but right. kind of how we compare to other districts. And it was always nice to hear. Yes. It was, it was good. Any other questions? Thank you, Ms. Kirby. All right. Um, we're going to move on to public comments from the posted agenda. At this time, uh, public, we have public comments. Um, any patrons that wish to address the board regarding items from tonight's posted agenda? Seeing we have one, I'll uh, read our parameters. Public comments provided during this portion of the meeting may only include items from the posted agenda. There will be a three minute time limit for individual speakers and a 15 minute total time limit for all speakers combined. Ms. Hibbs will monitor the time. Patrons are to approach the presenter station, speak into the microphone and state their name before making comments along with the agenda item they'll be making public comments about. Please direct your comments to the entire board. If a response is appropriate, I will respond or refer to another individual. In an effort to respect privacy, we ask that speakers refrain from discussing personal complaints involving individual staff members or students. Thank you. Good evening, everybody. My name is Scott Aldridge. I've spoken to most of you before. I live in Thousand Oaks. And I wanted to address the survey results because I'm actually very encouraged to see that there is a desire to fund a no tax bond agenda. Um, I think the, the community spoken that they would support that. And I also looked at a couple things, and Dr. Coward, I think you're exactly right, how you define parity or equity um, really gets to the crux of the matter as you guys are looking at you know what perhaps to do going forward. I don't believe school to school we currently have that parity in terms of facilities. Um, as I've spoken to all of you before, you know that my passion is around the stadium at Park Hill South, but as we have looked at the weight room facilities at Park Hill, actually some at Park Hill South, performing arts facilities and others, I don't think there's any argument that neither of the high schools are on parity with the other. Um, is it on parity for parents to go to a track meet at one high school, sit in stands, have the ability to have that track meet start whenever it would like and end whenever it would because they have lights versus going to another high school, having to bring their lawn chair or a blanket, sit on a road, a curb or a grassy hill, hope that the track meet starts on time and ends before it gets too dark to finish it. That's not parity between the two schools. It's not. The other thing I found curious was the question was, would we update athletic facilities? The question was, was not, would we provide athletic facilities? Which again, if you look at the parity between the two schools or the equity between the two high schools, we're not providing that equity, that parity between the schools because Park Hill South has the district soccer stadium. Park Hill doesn't. Is it parity, is it equity for Park Hill kids to get on a bus and ride over to the district stadium to play a soccer game as opposed to the Park Hill South kids that walk out of their own locker room and play a game anytime, night or day in their home stadium? 30 seconds. We've gone through a period of excessive heat I can personally attest to practices ending after nine o'clock because they have to start late for the heat and there's no lights 
provided to go beyond. We have other schools in nearby areas that are starting at 5.30 in the morning and allowing time for their students to eat dinner at home, to get their homework done, and be at a regular time. schedule at night. Time. I'd ask you to consider those things. Thank you. I'm going to move to board member reports and requests. Uh, Ms. Woodley? None, thank you. Mr. Klein? None, thank you. Ms. Reed? None, thank you. Mr. Payne? No, I, I um, would like to remark on the private, uh, well, it's a public public partnership really between this school district and the city of Kansas City and the tennis courts. Um, it's just great to see updated facilities. Those facilities, just given their location are kind of the bridge between this campus and uh, and Renner so there's just some continuity and just seeing that updated and kids uh, I, I see the women's uh, tennis team out there must be 60 maybe maybe even 70 I don't know the huge tennis team out there taking advantage of that investment on both sides and I'm sure the community uh, tennis players appreciate it as well so it's just uh, I know that was a lot of hard work that uh, the administration and other community members work together to make sure that we could secure that and just excited to see that come to fruition so mr monsas yes i'd like to uh request to go over the professional development that we do for our teachers in our school year sure. at some point very sure. soon sure. thank you We'll need a motion and second to adjourn to closed session pursuant to chapter 610 section 21 of the revised Missouri statutes for the purpose of discussing matters relevant to subsections 3 and 13 personnel so moved second I have a motion from mr. Klein and a second by Ms. Reed to adjourn to closed session Ms. Hitz will you please call the roll yes I will Woodley yes Reed yes Monsas? Yes. Bolin? Yes. Fain? Yes. Klein? Yes. Board members, please remember to turn your mics off and a reminder to remain seated until the live stream fades. <coughs> we'll take a short break and be back at, uh, say, 725.